Oh, hi, it looks like we're live on Facebook. So I think it's exactly seven o'clock. I think we're gonna get started. Um, my dog Cosmo is not here today if anyone saw our little commercial yesterday. So that was just a fun practice. Um, my name is Vicki Rifkin. I'm a member of the Shaba Community Out Education team. And I was actually the lead staff person on our Show You Care project. So I wanna thank uh, the JUF Breakthrough Grant for supporting us on this project, um, for pushing us to do this amazing work. And it really is um, bringing people to our door who are calling and asking for help. So thank you so much, can't thank you enough. Um, for those of you who may not know about Shalva, uh, we are a domestic violence counseling agency located in the Chicago area. Um, and our mission is to support Jewish women experiencing and healing from domestic abuse through counseling, supportive services, and community education. Um, so why did we develop the Show You Care tool and what exactly is it and why am I talking about this today? So CARE and Show You Care uh, stands for Create Awareness and Respond Effectively. So the goal of Show You Care is to help friends and family better support an, a survivor who may be experiencing domestic abuse or intimate partner violence. They're really exchangeable for the same thing. Um, what we found was that during our live presentations back in the day when we used to be able to go in front of a group of people and talk and people could come up to us afterwards and ask questions, we really miss it, but this is a good substitute. Um, we would often get this question. Uh, I'm worried about my friend. She started dating this guy and I haven't seen her, seen her for a long time or um, my daughter's, um, I, I get a bad feeling about my my um, son-in-law or my daughter-in-law um, and they wanna know how they can help. So the thing that we know is that one in four women and one in seven men will experience um, intimate partner violence in their lifetime. And those are only reported cases. So uh, many people never choose to disclose the fact that they've been in an abusive relationship, but maybe one of their friends or family members suspect and they see a warning sign. So what we do know is that the number one reason a survivor finally gets the courage to make the call is usually because somebody else encouraged them to do so. So those people that came up to us in conversations at the end of a program were the ones that then went back and really encouraged their friend or family member in a caring way to make the call and get help and support to figure out how to um, move on from an abusive relationship. So uh, we reviewed our data uh, before we started this program and found that we consistently received calls from third parties and what we call third parties and that it actually accounted for about 25% of our total logged calls. So even if you know, you know, you've gone up, you've asked, you know what to say, um, it's still a hard conversation to have with someone. And it really takes practice. And that's why we developed an interactive tool on our website so that you would be able to um, practice and go through and think about different scenarios and learn different things to say. And we're gonna show you some of that in a little bit. Uh, we know that, and we wanna encourage you, you can always, always call our phone number. I'm gonna give it to you now. I'm gonna give it to you again. Uh, it should be in our um, comment section too. Uh, it is 773-583-4673. And that's where you can call to get help, where your friend can call and get help who's experiencing abuse. Uh, we're here for both of you. Uh, but calling a hotline might feel a little extreme. You may not be sure. You know, I don't want to get someone in trouble. Um, but Having this internet, um, this tool on our website will, is, is a way to kind of get you ready. If you're not sure you want to make the call, you can go through this. And then if you still have questions, hopefully you'll feel more comfortable with Shalva and listening to me today, and you'll be able to actually make the call. So um, <clears throat> what is domestic abuse? What are we talking about today? What does it really mean? 
you know, most people think only about physical abuse, about bruises or broken bones or pushing or shoving, but abuse isn't as obvious as you might think. Um, that's because domestic abuse is really about controlling someone's mind and emotions as much as it is, it is about hurting their body. Being abused can leave a person scared and confused, and it can be hard for them to see their own partner's actions for what they really are. Remember, they're in love with this person. So what you may see as abuse, they may think of as normal. So um, you probably already understand what physical abuse is um, in the news and movies and you know, whatever. Um, but emotional abuse or psychological abuse is not so obvious. And that is in most of the cases that we see. And actually the most common abuse that we hear about at our office is what we refer to as financial abuse. Uh, it is reported in over 90% of abuse cases. And this is what happens when money and resources are being controlled by an abusive partner. So uh, someone is put on a extreme allowance. They're not allowed to have money. They're not allowed to go to work. Um, you know, any way that someone can be controlled or they're just not told how much money the family has. Uh, those are all ways of financial abuse. And if you think about it, if you don't have access to money, um, you don't have the ability to control your life and you certainly don't have your, an ability to easily leave a relationship. So our education video on our Show You Care tool really discusses the different types of abuse and explains some of the warning signs that you can look for. So what I'd like to do next is show you one of our videos. Um, and it really tells you about the different steps that, uh, that so this person in the video goes through to help their friend. Um, so I am going to go ahead and remove my notes and share my screen and try and play this for you. Here we go. A few other families had recently moved away, so it was great to have another couple our age to spend time with in the community. We hung out at a music festival, we got drinks a couple times, but when we realized what Rich was really about... I always knew physical abuse was bad, but the emotional abuse turned Ellen into an entirely different person. She's such a creative woman and was always so colorful and bubbly. I missed that, Ellen. Around Rich, it seemed like the life was just drained out of her. She stopped asking us about our latest adventures with our new dog. She stopped telling her own quirky little anecdotes. We ran into each other at the JCC one day, and I saw that light drained out of her. I decided to just tell her we were concerned. I wasn't trying to get her to say that she was being abused. I just needed her to know that we cared and wanted her to be safe in her home. Every person deserves that. She didn't say a whole lot after that first conversation, but we ended up talking a few more times and the stories started to come out. I guess they tried couples counseling, or rather, Ellen had wanted them to, but Ellen realized pretty quickly that it wasn't safe to share in the session what was happening to her at home. And Rich thought everything was Ellen's fault, so it just made him angrier when they got home after counseling. It was clear Ellen wasn't ready to just up and divorce him, which is not unusual. I was doing some research and I learned there are a lot of reasons that women stay. And the moment that a woman does leave an abusive relationship is often the most dangerous because that's the time at which the abuser is most likely to become violent. So in order to get out of an abusive relationship, it can take something like seven or even more attempts. She wanted to get out, but it would take time. So we had to be ready to support her in the meantime. The best thing we could do was try to help her out with small steps along the way. I did my best to make it clear that I was around to listen if she needed to talk, that we'd be there for her, whatever she decided to do. We eventually helped her put together a safety plan. Rich had never been to our place, so we offered our home as a safe place for her to go if she ever needed it. She has a duffel bag with important papers, an extra set of keys, changes of clothes, that kind of thing here at our house. We have a coded phrase she can use to let us know she needs to come over without Rich knowing. We made sure she has the info for Shelva and all the support and resources around domestic violence that may be available to her. We try to help her think of the things she can do now to get back some little bit of control over her life. 
Every time she says, I can, it is a good thing. She knows that she's not alone. And whatever she eventually decides to do, the most important thing is that Ellen can make her own choices. Okay. So that gives you a little taste of what um, Show You Care is. And um, just to be clear, it is on our Shava website, which is shavacares.org. And you can click through and take this. And like I said, you can use this tool as many times as you want. Uh, it's kind of a choose your own journey. That's how we started uh, the project way back a year and a half ago when we first started thinking about what it was that we were going to be doing. So as you, when you click into it, when you start the go to go through the program, uh, the first thing to show you care does is it asks you how close you are to the person and how you are feeling. Uh, it's really important to take into account your own emotions as so you can best support your friend. And it's like, there's a secondhand trauma. So it really is important that you think about yourself too, because you know, in order to take care of yourself to take care of someone else. Uh, we talk about the different kinds of abuse. Um, like I mentioned, we acknowledge that your own emotions and concerns and show you care is really, it's designed to help friends and family who may be very worried and need some help themselves before they can help their friend, like I just said. Um, very often they want the woman to call or um, go to Shalva and that's, that's not how it really works. Uh, she has to make the, she or he has to make the call themselves uh, in order to get help. So um, how do you start the conversation? What are things that you could say that may be helpful? Um, you can say that it's just, I'm so sorry this is happening to you or that it must be hard for you. Uh, if someone brings it up themselves that, that they think they might be experiencing abuse, uh, thank them. Uh, they've entrusted you with something that they may not have ever told anyone else before. Uh, so something like, I'm so glad you told me, um, I'd like to help in any way that I can. And whatever you say to me is confidential unless you tell me it's okay to talk to someone else about it. And when you say that, you have to really mean it. You have to keep this information confidential because if you breach the trust, it's just one more person who is disappointed, the, your friend or family member. So it's really important. Uh, you should also acknowledge that the abuse is not their fault. They did not cause this in any way. Uh, it's about the abuser, it's not about them. Uh, you can remind them that they deserve to be safe and also that they don't have to be alone. Uh, there are resources like Shalva available to help. Uh, so what are some things that you could say that maybe not, may not be as, as helpful? Uh, anything that kind of starts with why is probably uh, a tip off that it's not a great question to ask. So things like, why don't you just leave him? Why did you start a fight? Uh, why didn't you call the police? Uh, you're a smart person, why do you stay? Uh, when you start peppering those kinds of questions, it's going to make a person probably feel worse, not better, and it's gonna shut down the opportunity to share and for you to say all those wonderful things about how much you care and why you even brought up this conversation at all, because it's a tough conversation. You don't want to lose the person as a friend. Um, you want to be there and be supportive. That's why you're listening to us right now. So acknowledge that you might make a mistake. You might say, why are you still with her? Or why are you still with him? Um, if you say something like that, own up to it. Say, and if you see them kind of back away or try to change the subject, say, okay, you know what? I am so sorry. That was such an insensitive thing to say. I'm, I'm really nervous. I'm, I just want to be here to help. And when you open yourself up in that way, maybe they open up in that way as well. And, and if they, you say all the right things, they may still say, I don't want to talk about this right now. There's nothing wrong. And like it showed in the video, it can take up to seven times for a person to think about leaving and then not leave. So you have to be okay with that. Um, our therapists always tell everyone else on the staff, um, the client is the expert in their life and they've got to make their choices when it's right for them, 
not when you think it's right. So um, keep in mind that they still may not do what you want them to do, but it's really about being there and being supportive and it's about what they want to do. So um, if they're not ready to talk, that's okay. And maybe they'll, you know, hopefully they'll talk at, a, at another time. So um, what are some other small steps that you can take? Um, friends and family can always call Shalva with um, more specific questions um, if they need, if they want to. Um, keep in mind that domestic abuse or intimate partner violence, whatever you want to call it, really affects our whole community. And we all want to be able to respond effectively. And that's, we're hoping that by having this out there on the internet, on our website, um, it will help more people respond effectively. Um, things you can really do are just spend more time listening. I hope I've um, really emphasized that during this short presentation and less time giving advice. Uh, I once heard that you never, you should never should someone, never tell them what they should do. Um, so that, that, that's giving advice. So um, just spend more time listening. Um, reassure your friend or family member that uh, the conversation is confidential, like I said before, and help to create that safe space for them to talk. And most importantly, is to remind them that they are not alone, uh, that there are people around who care about them and that they can always call Shalva. So with that short presentation, uh, I know that we have a few questions. I'm hoping we're getting a few more in. So I'm going to introduce Carol Ruderman, who may just be a voice on here today, but she's gonna be helping me out. She is our executive director at Shalva, and she is going to be asking a few questions as they come in. Thank you, Vicki, and thank you everyone who's joining us um, today. So I think you may have said this um, in your remarks, but a question did come in. Um, how do I find the videos? That is a great question, and I can show you that. I'm going to go back to my handy dandy share screen, and I will show you exactly where to go. Uh, so we are going to go to, back here, we're going to go on a different tab. Um, mm -mm. well, this isn't helpful. Hang on. Let me get out of here. Mm. Oh, gosh. Oh, I know. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Here we go. So it is shavacares.org. And you can see we got our phone number up here. Um, we've got a lot of different tabs across the top. Um, but right now, our very first thing on our website, you can see our pretty page here, is actually help a friend. So if you're worried about a friend or colleague or family member, you click in here and you go and get help. And then after you do that, you come up with the help a friend show you care screen. Uh, again, it says thank you to the breakthrough grant. And then we click into I'm ready to show I care. And then it's going to start asking questions like I mentioned. Um, let's, and it, it mentions it. So in a thing that it's good to know that this is not a quick fix. Uh, it is not a boom, boom, boom. I'm going to get all my answers. It, it, it's a heavy topic. So going through this program, project, tool, whatever you want to call it, is going to take a, about 10 to 15 minutes to do. Uh, so we'll, I'll show you just a couple of screens. We won't go the, through the whole thing today because I really want you to do it on your own. And it's like I, like I mentioned, one of the things that we check is whether or not this is someone you're concerned about. So um, we can say, we'll do medium. This is someone I care about but we're not very close. So uh, the reason why we have, I don't know this person well at all, maybe it's someone that you work with or um, you know, someone that you just have a, a, a very casual relationship with, but something's got you worried. You can still come here and uh, you'll get a different information than you would get if it was someone that you were close to. And Vicki, a question yeah. along with the um, tool is, yeah. is it, or this this questionnaire is it anonymous? Like if somebody goes on, will you we you know or we know who who? No, and that's 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 a great question. 
So not only this is completely anonymous throughout, but also keep in mind, you know, I mentioned confidentiality, how if you're having a conversation with someone, it you need to make sure that they understand that you understand confidentiality and you're not going to tell anyone. Um, that extends to everything that we do at Shalva. So uh, anyone who calls, it, it is con your phone calls are always confidential. So if you call as a concerned person, no one will ever know that you called. If a client calls, you'll never know. So sometimes we actually get calls from concerned people wanting to know if Betty is coming to Shalva. Well, we will never tell Betty or Bob. If, we will never tell if the client is, if someone is a Shalva client. Um, and if a Shalva client asks, did my mom call? Again, we would never tell that their mother had called either. So, because that's, I think well, thank you. So, Vicki, um, one other question that came in is would this be something helpful to go with, to, to do with the person that you were con are concerned about? Or is this better for you just to do privately? So, you know, there's a lot, that's, that's a great question. There's a, a series of questions in there that are really kind of warning signs of um, there are different warning signs about domestic abuse and about the different types of domestic abuse. So uh, you could go through it with a friend if they were willing to sit down with you. It could would be a wonderful way to have a conversation with some, you know, have a conversation and maybe it would feel a little easier if you're working on something together instead of looking directly at each other. But you'd have to be really sure that the person was is ready, is yeah. ready or, or willing to do it. Yeah, yeah you could. It first, but you could. You could. Yeah. Um, never, never thought about it. It wasn't really designed for that, but it, it could work. It could work. Sure. Um, another question that came in was, um, how do I make sure my conversation with my friend doesn't backfire on me? You know, they've done this tool. They're trying to use some of these um, comments and they're concerned it may backfire? Um, you know, all you can do is do the best you can. And like I said, you know, if maybe you, maybe you say the wrong thing, or like I said, they shut down, you just have to let them know that you're there for them and you support them. And at the end of the day, it's, if you're really concerned, then it's worth it to show your concern. And you can call Shalva and we can talk to you about it, you know, before you have the conversation as well as after the conversation. If you're, if you've had the conversation and it didn't go well uh, and you need someone to talk to, call, please call. And I think that's all the questions we have. If anybody has any last minute, if you're on the Zoom, you can either type in the chat or there's a Q&A, or if you're on Facebook, uh, you can put your questions up there. Uh, Vicki, you have anything else to say? We'll just give it a minute. No, I can't. I think I, I think I went through everything. I hope that this was helpful. Uh, I hope you do try out the tool. Again, it's at shalvacares.org and you can click right into it. Uh, go to the end so that you can leave your comments about it. I hope that you have a great experience with it. And uh, we're, we're here for you and we're here for survivors. So please please give us a call or check out our website. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.